Amazing hackers, hope you're all doing well today. Welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk about the automation that I've let hack for me and I've drawn my conclusions. I've come up with some interesting results and I want to share them with you. First of all, I want to go over each of them individually and then I want to talk about some general things I've got from this. So let's go, shall we? Now, the first thing I really wanted to talk about was Nmap, of course. Nmap, network, mapper. Everybody knows it, you can do port scans, but you can also run default scripts, probably a lot of you also know that. It's not very good in bug bounties in the sense that port scanning is usually done with mass scan, after which you feed your port scanning to Nmap and then you can get some more information from there. Um, but the scripts are usually, and especially in bug bounties, a go, no go kind of thing. It's not that great to run the scripts. They're usually not going to give you the best results out there. Now, it's required in most pen tests and it's required in most broad scope bug bounties as well. If they allow for port scans, that is, of course. As a, for Nikto, Nikto is a vulnerability scanner, a web vulnerability scanner. And again, in bug bounties, I haven't found much using that tool. But I don't do much broad scope bug bounty, so I definitely do think it has a place to run Nikto, but it's just not a place in my methodology. So I'm not convinced 100% that it's extremely useful. I will definitely still run it though, um, and, but I will run it on every single web server out there, not just port 80 and 443. I'll actually have a look at the ports, and that's going to give me an idea of how and what that's going to bring for me. 100% required in pen testing if there's a website or a web server, I mean, of course, involved, then it's definitely going to bring you a lot of useful results. Because, of course, a pen testing, uh, in pen testing, your target hasn't been touched that much. As for Nuclear, it's a vulnerability scanner and it's template based. And the sooner you learn how this works, exactly the better. Because it's great for Brodsko bug bounties, but it's basically just repeating requests that you tell it to and then checking how the re those requests give a response. And that's all due to those templates. And you have public templates, but I'm afraid everybody uses those public templates already. So what I suggest you to do, and especially in bug bounties, is to write your own templates. Now, that's not easy, of course, but it will help you greatly. And in pen testing, I think you need to run all of the templates. That's, I think you always need to run all of the templates. But especially in pen testing, that's where that gets important. Now, what's also very important is Nessus, because a lot of people have heard about Nessus. It's pretty expensive. My wallet cried a little bit when I ran this tool, um, and I I don't know, great for pen testing, of course, not so good for bug bounties. Um, but for pen testing, I have nothing to say about this tool. Um, as for OpenVast, I cried when I did that um, because OpenVast, I, I can't get it to work properly 100%. Whatever I do, I just can't get it to work. It just keeps breaking on me. So for pen testers, it's definitely a good option if you want to go the open source route. But you'll have to go the open source route and actually show the patients to get to know the tool extremely well. Um, it's For bug bounties, it's not that great. Definitely not something that I would recommend you put your time into. I would rather have you learn how to hack manually than to run open fast. As for Neuralegion, that was pretty easy to use. It gave me good results, even in bug bounty scenarios that I've created. Um, and it has a lot of extensive features that I really like about it, but I'm going to make a very separate video about that as well. Now, what I love about this tool is that it's actually one of the automation tools that I would use in bug bounties, and the other ones, I would definitely recommend using them, but for me, they haven't brought that much good results yet. Um, as for Neuralegion, what's also good about that tool was that it didn't bring me much false positives. In fact, none at all. Um, for Burp Suite Pro then, let's move on to that one because that one did bring me a lot of false positives and that's definitely not something that I wanted. 
those false positives, they kind of threw me off because I had to spend a lot of time invested in those false positives. And I actually had to dig in deeper and see if they were actually something that I should report, etc. And of course, I also had to do that with the other ones. But this one, it took the cake for me. Now, not that it's bad because it definitely has good coverage for pen testers. And it's easy to set up. You just let it run. There's no extra setup. It's just maybe you set up your parameters for your smart scan or your live scan. I mean, and that's about it. Um, so what's also cool is the great integration with the rest of the features, of course, because of Burp Suite will find a vulnerability. You might use the other features to analyze it properly. It's not that good for bug bounties, the automated scan, I mean, because of course in bug bounties, what country is what company is going to run their scanners like Burp Suite Pro on a target before they release it and actually risk paying up to 10,000 euros or even more. So they'll definitely run that themselves. Um, that's a guarantee. And if they didn't, another hunter before you will have done it. It's simple as that. It was Zap. That gives good coverage as well. But it's a little bit more confusing to set up, I found. Um, that might just be me, but it's not that hard to get into. You just have to adjust a little bit, maybe watch my old WASP Zap video, and then you'll be good to go. Simple as that. Um, it's great for pen testers. That's something I really wanted to say. Um, it's great for pen testers because if you want to get into pen testing, but you still can't afford to properly support uh, any of these like Nessus tools, for example, Zap might be your solution. Or if you want to go the open source route, that's also a possibility, of course. Then Zap also has a solution for you. Um, I did find false positives as well. That was so that's something I really don't like about my tools. But of course, I can't expect every tool to be proof of concept based. It's as simple as that. So from all of these things, from all of these automated scanners that I've let hack for me, there's a few things that I've learned, a few key takeaways, if you will. One of those things is that in bug bounties, these automated scanners are rarely allowed. The second thing is that there's so many scanners out there and pretty much all of them are good for pen testing. So I try to run all of them as much as possible. Now, the third thing I wanted to take away is that there are a lot of tools available. And I do mean a lot of them because what I've covered here, it doesn't even cover the tip of the iceberg. So if you guys want me to make part two, make sure to smash that like button and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye amazing hackers. Woo!